it pains all of us that oftentimes the true meaning of Christmas is lost. Amidst all the tinsel and lights, many fail to see the starlight and straw. But I want to just share with you three, very briefly, three reasons why Jesus coming to this earth means everything or should mean everything to you. Number one, incarnation, that is in flesh. God became flesh. As Isaiah foretold, behold, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and bring forth a child. And his name will be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Incarnation is revelation. Revelation. God didn't say, maybe one day you can climb up here and be with me if you're good enough. He said, I am going to descend and I am going to become one of you. In a, in a crude sort of pale comparison, artists put everything they are into their art. Rembrandt put himself into his oils, into his painting. Michelangelo into the sculptures of marble. Shakespeare into poetry and prose. And God is the greatest artist of all, and he put himself in flesh. Incarnation is for revelation. God did not have to disclose who he is to us, but he did. But secondly... Incarnation is for identification. Identification, well, what do you mean? I mean this. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the Son of God had to become like his brothers in order to be an atoning sacrifice for their sins. God identified with us. The story goes that hundreds of years ago, Peter the Great wanted to uh, really identify with the common people, so he took a trip to the rest of Europe. Only he disguised himself amongst 250 travelers. The disguise didn't work very well because he was quite tall. But nevertheless, another crude and pale illustration, God, though perfect, wanted to be complete in the experience of humanity and so he became a man. He identified with us, our, our dreams, our desires, our temptations, because the author of Hebrews said he was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Incarnation is about identification. Incarnation is about revelation. Incarnation is about identification. And incarnation is about, of course, salvation. Because Jesus did not say when he had tasted that sour vinegar and wine. And the Bible says he was about to give up the ghost. He did not say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. To tell us die. Meaning, meaning, I have finished paying for your sins and 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 the sins of all who would ever live. And he became sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Incarnation is about salvation. He has done it all. Now let me just ask you as we go into our time of response. We always have a time of response here at Ridgeway Baptist Church. Have you received who he is? Have you received him what he's done? Have you responded to the knowledge of God that you've been given? You say, well, there's just so much I don't understand. Well, the Bible teaches that if we'll respond to the light that we have, then the light moves forward and we have more light and more light and more light. Have you responded to the light of the gospel? 
the truth of Christmas. If you haven't, I want to tell you how you need to do so. The Bible says that we're all sinners. We're, we're all people who make mistakes. The Bible says there's not even anyone who seeks after God. And the Bible says that this sin has caused something. And here's what it's caused, separation. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. But here's where the good news comes in. That's really the bad news. But the good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but has everlasting life. He came, that's Christmas, he died, and he was buried, and he rose again, that's Easter. That's Christmas, that's Calvary, and that's Easter. That's the gospel, the, lo the sinless life. The substitutionary death is our substitute. And then the victorious resurrection of Jesus. All, why? So that those of us who are sinners, which is all of us, all of sin and come short of the glory of God, we're dead in sins and trespasses. It's so that we can be raised to newness of life. And that's why Jesus said just a few words before he gave us John three sixteen. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, except a man is born again, born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I believe with all my heart right here today on December the 17th, 2017, the Lord through his Holy Spirit and his word wants to birth into his kingdom Christians, believers, children of God. And so would you receive this? How do I receive this? Well, you recognize you're a sinner you recognize who he is and what he's done. We've talked about that. And here's the last part. The Bible says, to as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become the children of God. You need to receive Christ. You say, well, well how do I do that? Is, is, there, is there a document I need to sign or a prayer I need to pray? Well, praying a prayer doesn't save you. Signing something doesn't save you. Joining a church doesn't save you. Getting wet in the baptismal doesn't save you. The Bible says it's repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can do that in a prayer, but just praying words doesn't save us. But whoever will truly call on the name of the Lord, that's call out in confidence and repentance and faith, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what, what really is repentance and faith? And this will bring us all the way to the point of our response time. Repentance is just saying, Lord, I'm changing my direction. I'm, I'm changing my mind. I've been the ruler of my life. I've been in charge. And it's not enough just to believe in God. Lord, I'm turning away from the direction I was headed in. And then here's faith. What's faith? F-A-I-T-H, forsaking all I trust him. Jesus, I put all of my trust in what you did on the cross to save me. And of course, to do that, you've got to understand that we're saved by grace, which means there's nothing you can do to make God love you anymore. There's nothing you can do to merit salvation or to earn a place in heaven or enough you could do to sort of outweigh your bad deeds but it's just the undeserved, unearned favor of God on your life. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Friends, thank you for joining us today here on the program. The Bible teaches that when God's Word goes out, it doesn't return empty. It accomplishes what He wants it to accomplish. And the Holy Spirit uses that to draw us to Christ. Do you know Christ? The Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Would you respond to the Word of God today? Would you respond to the drawing of the Holy Spirit? Just reach out to Him by faith in your heart, trusting that what He did on the cross is enough to save you. Just pray, Jesus, what you did on the cross, I want that applied to my life. Jesus, save me, forgive me, 
Make me a new person. Amen. If you trusted Christ, we want to hear about it. Would you contact us via the information on the screen? We'll also be glad to send you a new booklet that I've written, Following Jesus in Memphis. And until next time, may God bless you and may His Word be light for your living.